Hello friends, new video, new topic and if you are wondering why am I wearing stethoscope today with me, the answer is obvious, this video is on stethoscope. Short video, let's try to understand uh, the stethoscope and all the academic things related to uh, this particular instrument which is the most commonly used instrument in clinical practice. Uh, first things first, how the stethoscope was invented? Now, first of all, listen, stethos means chest, literal meaning and therefore, a uh, stethoscope is used commonly, most commonly uh, to hear the chest sounds and obviously, there are two organ systems in the chest, the heart and the lungs. So, primarily this is used uh, to listen to the heart sounds and the sounds originating from the lungs. Uh, well, if you want to know the history, a brief history is something like that. Um, Dr. Lenak is credited with the invention of stethoscope and the story goes thus that uh, he was a physician and uh, he would commonly uh, be required to hear the chest sounds and uh, particularly in those days there were no instrumentations. So, uh, the common method was to apply your ear to the chest wall of the patient and try to hear the heart sounds or lung sounds. Now, uh, there would be male patients, there would be female patients and sometimes it would be awkward uh, for the doctor to apply the external ear or to move so close to the patient and uh, hear the sounds originating from the chest wall. So, what he did was and that was the first stethoscope which was used was a wooden cylinder or in fact, first stethoscope was just a roll of a paper. Um, uh, it would be used to hear those sounds. And then there was wooden cylinder with, with some kind of parchment membrane attached to one side. And then, uh, you know, with uh, as the time advanced, the stethoscopes became better and better and better till we have reached this stage of very good instruments, these stethoscopes. So, that was a brief history. Now, let us understand all the parts of a stethoscope and how it should be used. All right. So, here we go. Uh, basically, there are two parts for a stethoscope, the ear frame and the chest piece. The ear frame goes into the ear, yes, and the chest piece, right. Now, what is the proper and most appropriate way of holding a stetho while you are going to examine the patient? The ear pieces should be directed towards the patient and not towards you. So, you can see here, if I am a doctor, I am the doctor and I am examining the patient, the ear pieces are directed forwards towards the patient. That is the correct way, towards me, incorrect, correct, incorrect. So, ear pieces should be directed towards the patient. This is a simple way of explaining. Now, I will tell you uh, the reason behind it. The ear pieces should be directed downwards, forwards and medially uh, or let me reorganize it, downwards, medially and forwards. That is forwards for me. This is going backward. So, uh, so you just remember it should be going towards the patient, these ear pieces, they are directed forwards or towards the patient, not towards you like this. The reason is very obvious, uh, our external auditory canal, our external ear is directed downwards, forwards and medially, downwards, forwards and medially. Downwards and medially is anyways going to happen with these ear pieces, but most important downwards and medially and forwards not backwards, this is going forwards or anteriorly, this is going backwards. So, downwards, 
forwards and medially forwards towards the patient i repeated it almost n number of times anyways but that's good you can answer this in the viva that this is the direction of the external auditory canal yes and therefore this will be these ear pieces will snugly fit into the external auditory canal look if it is held like this and if it is uh, if the stethoscope is worn like this with ear pieces going backwards towards you uh, it will still give you the sounds but it won't be these ear pieces won't be snugly fitting into the external auditory canal and then there would be undue pressure on the walls of the external auditory canal some external sounds also may enter the ear and that's not good i mean uh, that will interfere with your uh, sounds so therefore remember nth number of time ear pieces should be directed towards the patient that's the correct way this is incorrect okay now uh, that's about the ear frame then there is a conducting tube and there is a chest piece chest piece if you look at the chest piece it has got two sides diaphragm and bell the curved uh, part is the bell and this is the diaphragm flat portion you know this uh, any flat uh, curtain like structure is called as diaphragm in the body also we have uh, uh, at least three diaphragms the thoraco abdominal diaphragm the iris diaphragm the pelvic diaphragm flat curtain like structure so over here this is the diaphragm flat part and the bell now what is the uh, requirement of the two parts look a uh, bell generally is used for low pitch low frequency sounds some typical sounds can be heard better by the use of bell so low pitch low frequency sounds particularly uh, some heart sounds like murmurs a murmur of mitral stenosis or any such murmurs are heard better uh, due to their peculiar uh, frequency and pitch they are heard better with the use of bell or some other peculiar sounds like uh, fetal heart sounds yes even for that uh, the bell part is commonly used so bell diaphragm uses of bell sometimes asked in the vivas uh, apart from that i mean for most other chest sounds and other sounds we will use diaphragm and you can see there is a mechanism there is a knob which you can rotate to uh, connect either the bell or the diaphragm uh, into effect i mean both the sides can't be used simultaneously you can either use bell or you can use diaphragm and you use the knob for connecting either of them now um you have to also know which one is in contact which one is operational how do you do it now i want to see the diaphragm whether it is in contact right now i'm going to tap and i will know whether the diaphragm is in contact here but my advice to you is don't ever tap directly on the diaphragm it's dangerous you know uh, it can cause hearing loss because it's such a uh, irritating sound that create uh, created and uh, you know it can damage your ear so cover the diaphragm like this and then tap it tells you the story yeah diaphragm is in contact please do not tap over the diaphragm directly uh, it could be hazardous the sound um, is too loud if you tap like that directly okay so once we know that the diaphragm is in contact we can use the diaphragm for various purposes well let me tell you one thing which i learned from my professor of medicine suppose uh, you have the stethoscope and uh, the the diaphragm is broken then how do you use it 
well there is a there is bell on the other side that's always there but is there any other way you can still use the diaphragm yes uh, the answer is exposed x-ray plates if the diaphragm of your stethoscope is broken you are in the medical college go to the hospital side and see whether you get an exposed x-ray plate you know there are x-ray plates readily available in the hospitals uh, that x-ray plate which has already been exposed to x-ray means already some x-ray is there on that plate just carve out the cir a circular portion of that plate and then you can fix it in the place of the diaphragm and you can use it so these are some of the things which uh, only professors can tell you um, they come with certain amount of experience all right so that's the bell and the diaphragm and how they are used uh, should you buy it in the uh, at the level of first year medical school well you can buy it because it's a matter of pride you uh, ca you're carrying the stethoscope and you look like a doctor that's a good idea but then uh, go for the one with the lowest price yes so that if it is uh, lost you won't feel that much hurt you know if uh, if your stethoscope was of a, a lower price there are stethoscopes uh, of various companies with various grades like 3m litman stethoscope superior quality it's said to be but you don't need it at the first med uh, first year medical school so uh, try with the with the simpler ones first all right that's the use of stethoscope and these are some of the uh, information related to the stethoscope why i chose to select uh, why i chose to uh, take this particular topic is because just about 2 days ago uh, it was a world stethoscope day so i thought uh, i'll record a video on this and uh, anyways in the uh, in the medical schools they do ask uh, some questions related to the stethoscope so that's it for now for this particular video next video we will talk about the use of stethoscope uh, in certain clinical examinations like bp measurement or vocal resonance etc